All right, everybody, welcome back to Renaissance Man Media. Uh, today, I'm going to be doing my License to Kill review. This is a movie, it's been like three weeks since I've seen it. Uh, like I mentioned in my last video, the Timothy Dalton movies are kind of what got me into um, wanting to do this whole list because I'd never seen them and I'd had them sitting in my Blu-ray shelf for a long time. So I was like, you know what, I want to sit down and watch them. So I watched Living Daylights first, which I was meh about like there are parts of it that i was like yeah it's pretty good but overall i thought the movie was pretty lackluster license to kill i had expected that i wasn't gonna like this one because i'd heard it was darker and i was like okay i probably won't like it and actually i ended up liking it quite a lot um don't exactly know where i'd rank it on my bond list as of right now um but i i think this movie is really underrated i know it's it's now all of a sudden got like a following sorry it's got a following a little bit but um I think Timothy Dalton, this is, uh, I've heard other people say this, but this is like what he's more suited to do as James Bond. I think they did a good job of capturing that. Um, basically, the brief plot is uh, Felix Leiter, you know, the good CIA buddy that Bond's had in many movies. They got the same actor from Live and Let Die. Um, let me pull him up right here. Uh, David Hedison. So he's back and he was my favorite Felix for a long time. And then I think Jeffrey Wright overtook that. But Anyway, uh, Felix is getting married uh, at the very beginning of the movie. They're like, hey, we got to track down this drug lord, Sanchez. Um, we got to get him. They capture him. They put him in custody. Then we go to the opening title sequence, which I love, the song sequence. Um, this License to Kill song, I just find it catchy, that initial, like, when it hits the dun, dun. I love that. Um, I think the reason I love it so much is because they took, like, the GoldenEye soundtrack uh, from the game I've noticed they have a lot of the older James Bond themes they added into that game to kind of make the soundtrack. And that License to Kill, dun, dun, that's in that game a lot. And I guess that's why I like it so much, but I think it's awesome. And, you know, Gladys Knight might not be like my favorite artist or whatever, but I thought the song's pretty good. Um, and, and I like it. So, yeah, then we get on to uh, Felix eventually uh, after the wedding, him and his wife. His wife gets murdered. Spoilers. Uh, and then Felix, I thought for the longest time when I would hear about this movie, they make it sound like Felix gets murdered. He doesn't get murdered. He just loses a leg. Um, but he, you think he's going to die by the shark attack. Anyway, uh, Benicio Del Toro's in this movie. He's like the sidekick to the main bad guy, which I, I need to say the main bad guy is played by Robert Davi, who I'll do my Bond villain rankings at some point, but he's probably going to be up there because he is truly intimidating. Like he doesn't have to act crazy, do a whole lot. It's just this slow, like, you can tell people fear him. Uh, I like how much he values loyalty. That's good. But, yeah, I, I think he did a great job with, like, I, n I never had a scene where I was like, mm, didn't like that acting. I thought he did a great job. But his uh, his sidekick, or if you want to say his second-in-command, uh, Dario, played by Benicio Del Toro, I don't really care for his character all that much. He's a little weird. He has crazy eyes that I find a little over the top. He's got a, a, a blade that he... Like, does, tries to do some cool tricks with the switchblade, whatever. But, um, yeah, didn't care for the henchman. Anyway, uh, so, Timothy Dalton, he goes, to, like, he gets summoned by M, basically gets grabbed. And M was like, you need to, like, you were supposed to be in, like, Turkey last night. Or, uh, uh, I think he says Istanbul or something like that. And he's like, well, this case isn't finished. And they're like, okay. So, basically, he goes rogue. He's like, if you guys are going to want to take me in, he's like, screw this. He goes rogue. And then from then on, he's in the process of trying to infiltrate Sanchez's, uh, his uh, mob, basically, his, his, his uh, cartel, which I think is a really cool premise for a Bond movie. Um, and I liked it. Like, overall, I liked it. And I think another reason why I like this movie is the two girls that are in it. One's uh, uh, Talisa Soto, who plays a character named Lupe. And then we got uh, um, Carrie Lowell, which plays Pam Bouvier, I think is her name. She's one of my favorite Bond girls. I think she's awesome. Uh, I, maybe I don't love her intro scene. As much when they're in that, that uh, dance club thing by the docks. But aside from that, I think she's pretty flawless in the rest of the movie. I, I Obviously, I think she's damn sexy. And uh, she looks great with her short hair, which is surprising. Because most women, I don't think, look as good with short hair as they do with longer hair. But she looks good. Um, yeah. And so basically, like the action in this movie, I think there's enough to quench your appetite as a Bond fan. Uh, a lot of people love the final sequence with the, uh, the tankers. The gas tankers, not one of my favorites, although I'm fine with it, but it's not one of my favorites. Uh, I guess for me, it's mainly just the plot. Like, I was super interested in this, and uh, every time Bond's doing something I, or any dialogue, I'm super invested in. I would say my probably my favorite scene 
or action scene at least. Uh, I really like him using his gadgets to kind of set up where he's going to blow the window by Sanchez. I like that. Didn't care for the ninjas that come afterwards. That is weird that there's ninjas that just randomly pop up. That was probably the weirdest part of the film that I didn't like. But uh, yeah, overall, I think License to Kill is a really solid Bond movie. And I, I don't know exactly where it ranks right now. I would say it's at least middle of the pack. It's not one of the worst ones. I think it's middle of the pack and maybe better. We'll, we'll see. But um, I'm looking forward to rewatching this again at some point. But I'm just happy to know that like this one, uh, that it, I don't think everyone's crazy that like it. I'm like, yeah, I can see why people like it because it really does fit Timothy Dalton, uh, his style of James Bond, which is less jokes and, and more just like straight to the point action. Um, yeah, that's I don't know. That's pretty much it. I don't really have a whole lot else to say. Uh, overall, my ranking of this movie, I... Well, I won't say that I put it at buy it, own it. I can't say I put it that high, but I put it at guilty pleasure where I, I'm at least like, I, I like this movie. Like, I definitely like it over negative. But uh, buy it, own it for me is reserved for the movies that I really, really get a kick of, kick out of that I wouldn't call a masterpiece. This one's not a masterpiece. And I know there's movies, there's a separate category of movies that I really, really love. So um yeah license to kill if you haven't checked it out as a bond fan check it out most bond fans probably already have and if you're not a bond fan but you just are interested in some good movies license to kill check that one out like i said robert davi he's probably a top five bond villain uh not with like his dastardy dastardy dastardry how are you pronounce that word his plan is not this i'm going to take over the world it's just a, a drug cartel he's just trying to make as much money as he can and be a good businessman but i think the way they the James going for revenge and then him having to infiltrate the cartel, the location that it's at, the savvy stuff that he does. And like I said, uh, Carrie Lowell is a really good Bond girl that helps him out. Uh, they got some good stuff together. Maybe one of my other favorite scenes is when they plant the money to make one of uh, Robert, uh, one of Sanchez's uh, men look guilty. I thought that was really smart how they wrote that into the plot. But yeah, um, like I said, for me, that's a it's a guilty pleasure. Anyway, the next one that I'm going to be doing is my Quantum of Solace review, which I'm looking forward to rewatching that. Um, so yeah, look forward to the next one. But yeah, License to Kill, give it a shot. Have a good one, guys.